This audio fiction is recorded for an adult audience. It may contain scenes of explicit sex, violence and disturbing supernatural entities. Listener discretion is recommended. Come, lend me your ear, as I speak to you of the macabre, the cursed, the maligned, the malignant, the possessed, and the downright demonic. Bolt all doors, lock all windows. Are you alone? Are you sure? I suggest you check under the bed, carefully, twice. Baratanak, a new darkness at the world's edge. The treetops leaned, their conspiracy patient. A family of mongooses streaked like mirages across the shimmering road before Declan. He paused as one held back, observing the world from its hind legs. When it dashed away, he followed the cobalt horizon that beckoned him to the ocean. Towering feral sugarcane lined both sides of the asphalt, where trees could not deny them sunlight. Green walls of soft singing murmurs, he thought, as their blades swished above his head, taunting him with an imperceptible breeze. He slowed to pluck any wildflowers within reach, fodder for the giant tortoise that lived in the garden. Misshapen leaves and twigs also found their way into his bag. Treasure. For days they would rest on his windowsill, then be burned to ashes to mix with the droitwich salt, and scattered protectively across doorways and window ledges. Sweat pulled in dark stains below Declan's belt, his exposed torso offering a banquet to ambushing mosquitoes along the lonely pothole road. He swatted at them, occasionally plucking twigs to whip them from his skin like some religious flagellant. Where he could, he cut cross-country between bends in the road. With one eye on the tarmac ahead, he slipped around troll-like bearded figs and through the alien glades of many invasive trees that had replaced the old native forests of colossal mahogany and silk cotton trees known to harbour spirits. Snap! A twig broke beneath his feet, the air stagnant. Heeding an earnest warning offered by a lady at Le Papillon's New Year party, he peered deeply and stepped with caution to avoid a type of deadly white snake that she insisted infested the roots of silk cottons. Thankfully, they remained hidden. Halfway down to the beach, Declan's feet sank into the leaf litter beneath the branches of a solitary juvenile silk cotton tree. A ponderous, shiny bark giant, he thought. The tree already had branches thicker than a red London post box. At the beach, Declan deposited his bag and sandals safely on top of a large craggy rock, the jutting tip of a vast limestone iceberg largely hidden beneath the dry sand crust. On its surface, weathered by countless storms, his imagination conjured a dozen tortured faces, some screaming, others facing private agonies with determined stoicism. He crunched across the powdery sand to the surf line, spotting heartless frowns among the organic and plastic, flotsam and jetsam, marooned since high tide. Wet sand swallowed his feet as he waded forward through the knee-deep water on the beechwood side of the shallow reef. He jumped into the scoop of a large coral fringe rock pool. Completely immersed, he surfaced gradually to the sound of the ocean's furies. 
His eyes followed the sound, level with the water's surface, across a watery plain. Where the reef ended, he saw line after line of white, frothy walls approach to be crippled at the underwater ramparts of the reef. Never turn your back on the sea, he remembered his father calling sternly from the sands of Salamis in northern Cyprus, watching him as he swam out to the submerged ancient harbour walls that tempted treasure hunters of every kind. Declan floated, eyes closed, the salt water sealed over his head. His womb was walled with coral and liquid sand and watched over by blue sky. Sucking his lungs full of air, his eyes still clamped shut, he again floated head down. Called by the limitless, he turned his ear towards the deep, listening past the effervescent surf and attuning himself to the earth-splitting booms and roars concealed within it, those that emanated from immense lightless voids beyond the reef. As ever, he was humble to be in a place where he could experience such vibrational intensities, unfathomable in scale. Floating there, untouched by land, he was free. Declan opened his eyes, surprised to feel sand under his toes while buoyant. Wild white water surged, a, a looming glassy tower tugged the water from under him. He dived with a last effort to dig his hands into the sand to find an anchor of coral. The water screamed with fury. The sand ran through his fingers, no purchase to be found. He braced his body. The seconds froze, the waves slamming like a freight train. His face was forced into the sand, grinding his cheeks raw against the grains. He was churned powerless as a thick plateau of water returned to the ocean. Oh no, he thought, his pulse pounding at the realisation he was to be swept away. He was carried relentlessly across the flat reef's kaleidoscope corals, the usual knee-deep water now chest-high and unstoppable. Thank you for listening. If you have enjoyed this episode, then please subscribe. I must leave you now, but do not despair. If you listen to the next instalment, the curse cannot harm you, but you must believe. Now pull the blanket over your head and be quiet. You are not alone. Shh.